Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, better known here as Abolitionist J on Steemit. I'm hoping that this one will actually make it as a video here on Steemit and I don't have to post it elsewhere. The first vlog I attempted to do, unfortunately, there seemed to be a glitch in the system and apparently only people who had the Brave browser were actually able to view the video. I was told by a lot of other people that the audio worked at least and people seem to be appreciative of that. The it, I, I received quite a bit of upvotes and uh, re, re steams and whatnot. So thank you everybody for doing that. I, I really appreciate it as I begin my journey here from homeowner, business owner to temporary homelessness to my upcoming trip uh, over to the Midwest and then hopefully uh, getting some more content once I get there and get set up and uh, start working towards my farm. Anyway, uh, since I did my last video, a couple more things have come up, so I wanted to give a little bit of an update. Uh, before I get into that, though, I will mention I did get some comments on the last video, even though the video didn't work for most people. The still shot was there, and I did get some comments about the flag behind me. Uh, I guess some people saw the little cross up in the corner and were confused, thought I was... Uh, celebrating the Nazis of some sort. Uh, actually, I'm going to roll myself out of the way for a second. You'll see in the opposite bottom corner, there's actually another little uh, icon that will maybe make a little more sense of this whole thing. So... Yeah, down there in the other corner is, of course, the image of Max Stirner, the famous egoist. And this flag was actually created by my friend Jim Jesus. I call it my spook buster flag. Uh, it was obviously modeled after one of the Nazi flags. It's kind of a joke, but as you can see, there's a giant Ghostbuster s s symbol in the middle. So this is meant to be a joke. So anybody who saw that and maybe got offended for some reason, yeah, it's not what you think. I'm definitely the farthest thing from a Nazi. Anyway, moving on to what's gone on since I, since I last talked to you folks. Uh, yesterday, I had the building inspector come to my house because there was apparently a violation given to me for allegedly running an illegal business. Uh, this violation apparently came down last year when I was inundated by calls and viol alleged violations from pretty much every alphabet soup agency in the area after my little post went viral last year and a whole bunch of people got upset and then a bunch of people set out to destroy my lives so they destroy my life rather so they they went out and reported me to every agency that they could, they could think of whether i had actually done anything wrong or not they were just trying to destroy me and this violation got through somehow i i never saw the violation i was never given anything that said i had a violation but now as i'm in the process of trying to sell my house it came up on a title search and I called, dreading that call, because as I've documented here on Steemit through some of my blogs and stuff, the trials and tribulations I've had to go through dealing with the local government, just trying to sell my house and get the hell out of here, I, of course, was prepared for more BS and, uh, and more extortion attempts under the guise of revenue generation and whatnot. Uh, for once, though, I had a positive experience with a town official. I actually got lucky the individual who was sent to my house to do the inspection actually happens to know and sort of be friendly with my real estate attorney. And also his wife actually used to work for my cousin who was a member of the town government at one point. So because of these connections, this actually went a lot more smoothly. Uh, it was still a little frustrating because... I didn't know the guy knew all these people before he arrived at my house that we figured that out as he, he walked up to introduce himself finally. But number one, he was half an hour behind schedule, which is always frustrating to me. I, I do my best to try to be on time, if not early to any appointment I have to be to. Uh, I mean, things have gotten a little hairier since I've had kids, but that's just always been my thing. I, I always try to be early. That's just I, you know, and I, I, I don't expect others to follow suit. I don't expect others to always be early for their appointments. But if you make an appointment with somebody, I, I expect you to show up at the de designated time. And if you don't, I mean, a couple of minutes here or there is one thing. But if you're going to be later than five, ten minutes past a scheduled appointment time, you know, th the nice thing to do is call somebody and let them know. Well, of course, this is the town, so I didn't receive a call. And the guy just showed up half an hour later. And I was so I was already frustrated, but luckily that was diffused right away once I figured out who he knew. And 
you know, the guy came in. He was very nice. He sat and chatted with my wife and kids for a while, which, you know, very pleasant, you know, nice conversation and everything. But when it comes to actual town work, which he was getting paid for to be there, he literally just came in, peered at my, like, took a quick glance at my backyard, asked to come inside, and then even though he was supposed to be there about an alleged violation of a an illegal business, an illegal dog business, which he would presumably be looking around for signs of something like that, he didn't want to look for anything like that. All he wanted to look for was to make sure that I had smoke detectors in every bedroom, carbon monoxide uh alarm alerts on each floor and that none of the bedrooms had any locking mechanisms that couldn't be knocked out with one of those little punches that the fi- firemen carry on them because of course these are these things are all code violations and if i was missing or had the wrong piece in any of these things i could actually be cited for another violation which had nothing to do with the reason why the guy was here in the first place but you know that's government efficiency for you Luckily, I, I had all these things in place. So literally, the guy came in, and for the job he was supposed to do, he took less than two minutes to look around and go, okay, everything's good, which is great for me because you know this supposedly this morning, this violation was finally wiped off my record. So my tit- the, cert- uh, the title search for my house should now show up clean, which means we could proceed and finally set a closing date on my house so I can get that much closer to getting the hell out of New Yorkistan. But you know, when I sat back and thought about it, it was just like, that's just insane. Like I said, the guy was really nice and he obviously knew family members of mine. So sitting and chatting with him wasn't a problem, but you know, he was on the government clock. He was getting paid by my tax dollars (laughs) to sit there and chat with me. And you know, he obviously just took one look at my house and was like, Oh, everything's fine here. But it's just another one of those stupid roadblocks that the state puts in front of you for pretty much no reason other than, other than to inconvenience you all under the guise of safetyness obviously, because, well, that's what government does. Anyway, so that's that's over and done with. I still haven't heard back from my real estate attorney yet, but hopefully by Monday I will finally have a closing date, and then, you know, we can start moving this ball along a lot faster. The other thing that happened since I last talked to you guys is now today is officially my last day of work again. <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned, for anybody who, who wasn't aware of this before, I, I had run a pet, a pet sitting company for about a dozen years, and I actually, quote unquote, officially shut the doors back in October. And of course, all the people that were mad at me over my viral post earlier this year and everything that went uh, last year and everything that went down after that thought that they had won and they had forced me out. Well, the reality is that I was planning on shutting my business down anyway, because as I've talked about here and plenty of other places, I've been trying to get out of New York for a couple of years. So that they didn't, nobody forced me out. I made a decision on when to close my company, but I ended up after closing, I ended up uh, hanging on to a few clients who desperately wanted me to stick around. And I worked out deals with them where I would continue to do their dog walks for them, uh, even though my company was technically disbanded. So that went on now from October until today, and today is now, what, April 6th? So today is officially my re, re reti- my re-retirement from the dog-sitting world as uh, I just finished up my last set of walks. I have one dog I have to go check on later at his house and just make sure he's okay before his owners come home late tonight. And then that's it. I am officially, officially unemployed completely not even part-time work now and well that's very liberating and scary all at the same time because well you know i got a family to feed uh i got i got animals to take care of i got stuff i gotta do so you know it's a little freaky uh i i haven't been unemployed in a very long time because well i've been self-employed for the past dozen or so years so it's kind of a weird experience But it's all part of this journey that I started talking about in the last video. You know, this is part of what I got to do because I want to get the hell out of here. I want to get to a different location and start a new life with my family. And this is just all part of the process. So, yeah, I'm going to officially be unemployed. And as I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to be technically temporarily homeless soon. But it's all towards a larger goal because I want to get the hell out of here. I want to get set up in Indiana with my family. I want to start 
my wife and I start working over there, make a little money, and then, you know, get working on our farm. That's the plan, and I intend on sticking to that. So the unemployment, while, you know, like I said, a little unsettling, it's, I know towards the larger goal, it's, it's kind of was going to have to happen anyway, because the one thing I'm, well, one of the things I'm super excited about getting the hell out of here finally is, you know, once we get to Indiana, the plan is that I'm finally going to get to play stay at home dad for a while which is something I've been looking forward to for a couple of years. When our kids were first born, we had agreed, my wife and I at the time, we agreed that she would stay home with them for a couple of years and give her, you know, that one-on-one mommy time and everything and and not dump them off in daycares and stuff like that right away. And the original plan was she was going to do that for about three years and then she was going to go back to work and I was going to actually close the business then three years ago almost four years ago now, I was going to close the business and I was going to become a stay stay at home dad. And then unfortunately things with the wife and I went kind of sour for a while. I think I've talked about that on either in, on some of my podcasts or my blogs or stuff here. But yeah, for those who don't know, things went south with us for a while. Uh, it did get kind of ugly, but we have since made up and we play nice again now and uh, we are back together and, and things are, things are going well for us and we're moving as a family out of here. But the, uh, you know, so since we never got to do that, because things kind of went sour, and we went our, you know, we separated for a little while, I never got that chance to do the stay at home dad thing. So now here it is a couple of years later. And hopefully I'm, I'm finally going to get that chance because while we're, we're moving to a state that has a much lower cost of living than good old New York Yorkistan does. And my my wife, I've, I refer to her as my wife. For anybody who doesn't know, we are not legally married. We probably never will be. That's only because I am against the institution of marriage as far as the state is concerned. Uh, you know, private ceremonies and stuff, I don't have a problem with. Maybe her and I will do one of those one of these days. But, you know, we're, uh, we're partners in crime. So I just refer to her as my wife to make it easier. But, you know, she has, uh, she has lots of good degrees and stuff and can make, uh, you know, she used, she used to make a heck of a lot of money. So <laughs> putting her back to work uh, and stuff that she wants to do, I'm not forcing her to go back to work. She does want to go back to work. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do quite well with, uh, with her running the show like that for a while. And then I'll get to do the stay at home dad thing, uh, get to take more of control of the rain. Well, control the reins is probably the wrong term when I'm talking about unschooling or self-directed learning, which is what we are trying to engage our children in. But I will be, you know, the leader of that little or that little organization, for lack of a better term, uh, once we get out there, which is really cool, because as I've talked about before, and I spoke about on a recent one of my recent abolitionist abstraction podcast with my friend and former co-host, Daniel Cuellar, it's something I've, I've always kind of been jealous of him of because ever since I've known him, he's been a stay-at-home unschooling dad. And I've kind of looked up to him in, in that regard and, and always wanted to emulate what he was doing because it, you know, I see how his kids are growing and wh- what they're getting to do and, you know, just how cool, like what cool little humans they are at this point, at this early point in their lives and how they have no fear of, 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 of adults and they'll talk to pretty much anybody and, and, you know, and ask questions and, you know, they're not these shy little kids who freak out when they see adults because they're never around them outside of their family or outside of like, you know, the authority structure. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And, uh, hopefully my kids are too. Most of the time they tell me they are sometimes when they're mad at me, they tell me they want mommy to stay home instead, but we'll see. It's either way, it's going to be a, a heck of an adventure. And I am so looking forward to it because as I mentioned before, I, you know, I've been looking forward to doing the stay at home dad thing for for a while now. So getting the opportunity to do that is super exciting for me. And then also it's, you know, it's going to give me a chance to, to keep working towards everything else. And then hopefully a couple of years from now, when I'm doing one of these vlogs, it'll be from my ranch. And, uh, that'll be something really cool to look back on if, uh, if that actually, if that comes to pass in, in the time frame that I'm hoping, you know, I, just to look back on a video that I did today, two years from now, and be like, wow, look how far I came. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. So anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much the update for now. Like I said, building uh, building situation with the building department, hopefully finally cleared up. I will hopefully re- receive my closing date. If not today or, to, you know, if not today, I, I assume by Monday, hopefully I'll finally receive it. And then, of course, I do have court next week. Still don't know what's going on there, but 
there will definitely be an update after that as well. So thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been Jeremy, or Abolitionist Jay, here on Steam It. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Love, peace, and voluntary interactions for all.